Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna do something a little bit different and demo something that I think is a little unorthodox. This Jackson JS1X Minion. So like many of us who have kids, sometimes they wanna get into playing guitar, playing instruments. Well, my kid just so happened to say, I want a guitar. And I said, let's go get one. So we went to the local guitar store and they had Fenders, they had the Ibanez uh, Micro, and we went through them all. He picked them up, played them all. I played them all. But then I saw in the corner, over by the Jacksons, kind of buried with all the other dinkies, was this JS1X Minion and I went hey that looks like your size let's try it out and he picked it up started strumming on it and it fit so this is by no means a high-end guitar but it's a name brand guitar and it's a guitar that you can set up and tune a lot of cheap guitars out there the ones that come in those you know hybrid guitar amp packs even though they're name brand Epiphone Fender or Squire excuse me or you know some of those catalog guitars that you see <laughs> they're just not worth the money they have awful QC they don't intonate and to me when you buy a kid an instrument especially a guitar it should be good enough that it makes them want to play it if it doesn't hold tune and it sounds terrible they're gonna get discouraged anytime they pick it up and they sound even worse than they would otherwise. So we picked it up. Honestly, he's touched it maybe three or four times since we bought it, and this was close to a year ago. I've been keeping it up, you know, keeping it cleaned, kind of tinkering with it every now and then. The only modification we did to it, which was at his request, was he wanted these silver knobs put on it. I already had them, so it wasn't that hard just to pop them on. Otherwise, when you buy this thing, it comes with all black. I've been wanting to kind of uh, pull this out and mess with it a little bit because honestly the pickups on this thing are kind of cool. Uh, they sound pretty good and the bridge pickup is pretty hot. So I'm testing out the uh, impedance on these stock pickups in this Jackson. I have it switched to the bridge pickup, 15.1, that is hot. So now I switched over to the neck pickup, 7.85, that's, that's about what I expect for a neck pickup. So you saw earlier today I went and I measured the uh, impedance on both the pickups. The neck pickup is in the 7 to 8 kilo ohm range, which is what I expect for a neck pickup. But the bridge pickup, it's like 14 plus. It's really hot. Uh, so let's go over a couple things before I turn up the volume and chug away. Some deficiencies in this guitar, just right away. This neck is dry as a bone. I still haven't changed the stock strings on this. When I do, I will definitely be oiling up this fretboard. It is a desert. Hardware, it's okay. This bridge is string through saddle, which is nice. The saddles are all nice. They're easy to move around and, you know, raise, lower, and get your proper radius. But it's also one of those cheap bridges that have the holes in the back where you can string, you know, through the back of the bridge instead. I've seen a lot of cheaper squires that have that only, no string through option. Luckily, this has a string through option. Way better for tension. Some of the positives on this guitar. Like I said, these pickups are hot. Uh, the machine heads are pretty pretty nice. They don't have a, any grit or any kind of like resistance. They're smooth. It's a simple design, so there's not much really to say about this. Fret work is pretty fantastic in terms of the uh, edges of the frets. It's as well smoothed out on the edges of the frets as almost any other guitar I own. And I can't say that that's always been the case with every Jackson I've picked up. All right, so some specs about the guitar. This is a 22 and a half inch scale length, 
pretty short but meant for small hands or travel. It's a the Amaranth fretboard. It's got the poplar body, 24 uh, jumbo frets, obviously not stainless steel. It's got your typical Jackson shark fin inlays. Um, yeah, three-way toggle. It's a really simple, simple design. And honestly, I think it sounds pretty good. So yeah, I mean, it, it is a chunky, high output guitar. It works really well going through this Mesa cab with vintage 30s. By the way, this is an original British made vintage 30 setup. I bought this cab back in 2002. So this is the original vintage 30 sound. Unfortunately, I don't have tubes in my Mesa triple right now. This needs to be retubed. It sat for a long time without being played. The plastic on the tube started to kind of rot on the rectifier tubes and when I went to go flip it on um, you know even with the silicone diodes I obviously had a bad power tube and it started blowing fuses like that so not playing through the Mesa instead I'm running my Boss Katana MK2 I'm going through the stereo expand out on the line out into a Seymour Duncan um, Power Stage 200 powering at four ohms in stereo, the Mesa cab. The one thing I'll say about this guitar, as it comes when you buy it, the strings they put on here, even though they're, they're light, they're meant for small fingers, I think it's a nine to 46. They're almost too light for the guitar and its scale length. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but there's a lot of sharpening when you press too hard down on these strings. And I have it set up, the height is perfect where I like it, you know, one and a half at the 12th fret on the high E, and just about 1.75 on the low E, uh, which is actually low D, I mean, drop D here. But the thing is, at this short scale length, it feels way looser than it should. I honestly think when I go to put new strings on here, I'm gonna bump up the, um, the gauge a little bit and I know you know you're thinking oh kids want to learn how to play well having proper tension will allow them to you know when they fret they won't have to adjust so much to actually keep it in tune <laughs> I tune this and then I realize that it almost makes it to where you have to sort of relatively tune some of the higher strings to get them to you know play chords correctly which is a problem and it really has to do with these really light strings that come on the guitar so I would just swap those out as soon as you buy this guitar in terms of actual intonation like not just tuning it but intonation really easy to intonate everything at the 12th fret is exactly an octave above open so that's nice and that's just a testament to that the fretwork on this guitar is actually pretty good. I don't, there's no high frets, there's no buzzing. It's all pretty straight up. This thing is actually really comfortable to play, even at the shorter scale, even for an adult, if you're gonna travel with a guitar and you want something that's just gonna kinda of shred out, or I'm not much of a shredder,
but something that's gonna chug out, shred out, whatever. Um, just to kind of keep your chops up. This thing's compact, it's cool, it looks good. It even comes in a couple other colors. I would definitely recommend this guitar only being 180 bucks. So let's talk about some more limitations because this thing sounds great distorted, but let's see what it sounds like clean. I think you can hear that it really is having a hard time with the pressure on my fingers trying to stay in tune. And I really wish I would have put new strings on this thing. Yeah, you see, I'm, I'm relatively tuned those high strings, and now they actually make a chord that sounds right. So just be aware of those strings. Um, it sounds pretty good, clean. Uh, that pickup on the bridge is really hot. I mean, there's quite a bit of a uh, breakup. So I would say this is kind of on the bridge pickup meant to be distorted. Um. But on the neck, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's more that's more clean tone. That actually sounds pretty nice. Yeah, I'm having to adjust my pressure way too much for these strings. Yeah, th this thing's pretty cool. I mean, it's a good learner. It's a good travel guitar. I'm not gonna record any albums with it. I'm probably not gonna play it on stage. But honestly, it's, it's pretty fun to jam on. It's really chunky. Yeah, so just be aware of the string issue. So this video also happens to be a demo of my Audio-Technica AT2020 and how it sounds mic'd up on a guitar cab. Now, this microphone is a condenser mic, and it's not the first thing you think of when you think micing up guitars. You think SM57, you might even have a 421 or some sort of ribbon mic, you know, that you see in all the, the cab pack IRs that you get online. Well. This AT2020, just a standard, less than $100 run-of-the-mill condenser mic, has kind of been a dark horse recording tool. I think Spectre Sound did a whole video on it a few weeks ago. Glenn was blown away by how well this sound up on a cab. And I'm actually digging it as well. I've only, this is only my second time really listening back anything from this mic coming out of a cab, but I'm sure as you can hear, it does a pretty good job. To kind of piggyback on this and to do a little bit more of a, a quick demo, I'm gonna go pull out one of my normal scale guitars that has Fishman pickups in it, and I'm gonna see what this microphone sounds like with that guitar. Be right back. Hey, what's up? So, I'm back. So this is my ESP Horizon. It's a 1997. It's um, got Fishman Kale Switch Engage set pickups in it. And it's tuned to drop C. So let's see what this uh, this AT2020 
how it sounds with a full size guitar. <laughs> listen to that back yeah so I just listened to it back sounds pretty phenomenal I also listened back to the uh, that, that Jackson and that sounds pretty good too so I think I might use this mic going forward for just doing these uh, these live recording videos I haven't done anything uh, on a video recording a cab yet so this is the first time <laughs> Yeah, that sounds pretty good. So let's check out these clean tones. Yeah, these pickups have three voices, so. Voice one is just kind of like a modern, a um, little bit less gainy. That's the voice two. It's one of my favorite voicings on any of the Fisherman pickups. And then there's a single coil voice. Voice 2 sounds really good distorted. Jackson JS1X Minion, go for it. Get your kids one. AT2020, you want to record guitar cabs and have something you can speak into and even record vocals, grab one. Anyway, that's it. Later. <laughs>